So when you're pan fishing, if I only had to pick three baits, I would pick the VMC Bullfly. It is a tungsten jig, but it fishes really light in the water. And some of you guys may remember, it's still everywhere, it's still a great, great ice fishing jig, was the VMC Tungsten Fly. And the, the difference between the two, and you really gotta look at them to, to figure it out, the Bullfly is a different hook. Bullfly has a wider gapped hook on it, more of a round bend hook that's better for crappies. It also has two tails on the back of it that when you're right in a bluegill's face or a crappie's face, when you're just swimming that, it's not going up and down, up and down, up and down. It's swimming and falling slowly and subtly and giving it a way slower action, a way more buggy action. One part that's left out about the bullfly and the tungsten fly for that matter, they are grab and go lures. In a situation where bait wasn't available or what, what have you, you can tie that lure on and it acts like what's below the ice. It acts like a bug, it swims like a bug, it jigs like a bug. And that is what makes that lure so attractive to me and a lot of other panfish heads out there is that you can tie it on, go fish and catch fish. So keep that in mind if you're looking for grab and go lures, lures that pretty much fish themselves, grab a bullfly or the VMC tungsten fly. There we go. That was a little, you see how subtle I was jigging that? And that was just to get that bullfly, just to get that bullfly doing that subtle action I was telling you about right there. And that slow fall rate, that's what sealed the deal on this fish anyways. We're gonna pop that out and let this fresh little guy go. And then the, the next one would be the Mongo jig, the VMC Mongo jig. That one, it's a longer shank ice jig in tungsten that is designed for plastics. So if you're a guy like me that's got a ton of different kinds of plastics in his box, that is the jig for all those plastic. It fishes heavy. You can really wag with like a nail tail. You can really wag the tail on that jig. And it's versatile. It's heavy. It'll punch through slush. It comes in a multitude of different colors and sizes so you can match whatever size you need with plastics. And as you know, you know, sometimes you're using an eighth ounce jig, sometimes you're using, you know, a 30 second. So, it, and it, it comes in an array of sizes to be able to match your plastics and your color. So they asked all of us, what do you want in a plastics jig? Well, one was a really long hook shank because some of the plastics we use are an inch and a half to two inches long. And if you're using a short shank, that fish sometimes has to get two or three bites to get that hook on there. The other one was a wider gap. A lot of kind of the trend is to have smaller and smaller gaps on these hook sizes. And for crappie specifically, I truly want a wider gapped hook just because it has holding power. When you hook that fish and he's swimming around and you have him just by a little paper in his mouth, you want that hook to bury through and hook some bone. And that's where those, the hooks that don't have a wide gap, they won't do that. They will simply go in the paper on, the, on his mouth, come back out, and then right before you get him up the hole or he bumps the bottom of the hole, that's why you lose fish. It's not because of a bad hook set or something like that. It's because it all comes down to hook gap and that's in my opinion it's the most versatile jig because let's say you get into a meat bite you can simply thread a whole wax worm or spike on that mongo jig and then put one on the tip and send it back down and it works perfectly with live bait as well oh that guy kind of gave it a light little light little poke i think this there's two marks down there and again well here you go i'll get toward the mongo Mongo jig there, hook gap, as you saw, right in, right where it should have been. And I think the bigger fish is right below him. And you'll see that with crappies a lot of times is sometimes the smaller fish will be on top and the big fish will be on the bottom. There we go. And that guy was a, a real example of having to, even with live bait, live bait really having to work that fish to get him, coax him into biting. And this feels like a better one, so I'm gonna get my unit out of the hole. Oh, yes. Right there, come here. Boom, and again, that is a nice Northern Minnesota crappie hooked right where it should. You'll see in this video, they don't edit anything. Like, that is the truth right there. My number two jig, Mongo jig, right there. Live bait, big crappie, hooked right in the top of the mouth. And that's right there is exactly how you do it. There you go.
Now my third one is the VMC Flash Champ Spoon in a 30 second size. And that is basically just a meat delivery system. You can chuck it full of bait, send it down the hole, and if the, if the panfish, bluegills, or crappie, or perch are just chowing on bait, that is a fast way to get it down there with a lot of flash and a lot of pounding action for those panfish. One thing to, to add to spoon fishing is they fish incredibly fast. One of the fastest outside of a jigging wrap, the fastest lures to fish underneath the ice. You can get down there fast, you can jig fast. When they stop, they stop almost instantly and that is, that is a real key. When you stop jigging a spoon, it's so heavy that it just kind of sits there and shakes back and forth a little bit. So keep that in mind. If your fish are super aggressive, sometimes the best way to, to fish for them is to simply spoon feed them. When you're basin fishing or even shallow weed fishing, there's a lot to be said, especially in lakes that don't have a high predator population of the calling power of a spoon. You know, the spoon's got those split rings on there and it's got flash. It displaces more water, which a lot of people don't think about. And it just can call fish in. And like we're, right now, unless we want to drill out this whole lake, we are using flashier colors, bigger baits, things like that to call the fish into us first. So split rings and treble hooks and spoons, when you're jigging that spoon aggressively or just, do, 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 just shaking it, what's happening is people don't think that that little split ring and that little hook and that little spoon that you're making noise down there. It's a sound that emulates what's naturally under the water with bugs and things like that. So when you talk about noise with spoons, you don't, it doesn't have to be a rattle spoon. Spoons that have no rattles in them make plenty enough noise on their own. Up bite. That was a heck of an up bite there. So this is, this would be number three on my list and I'm caught on my news record. Number three with the big crappie is the VMC, the VMC Flash Champ Spoon. You see how that guy's hooked right in the mouth Way back in there. And it comes out and that is quite simply how you do it. One, two, three punch on all of, all of the baits. It is bull fly, because it's an all around utility, utility jig, bait or no bait, Mongo jig again, again, made for plastics, works very well with live bait as you saw, and VMC flash champ spoon a fast bullet method for catching fish at any time of the year.